And incidentally, you'll notice the larger solder pads on these outer pins of all of these chips. And there are solder thieves. Uh, they go under various uh, names, but this is designed to be wave soldered. And you can tell this board has been uh, wave soldered instead of reflow soldered. You know, if you look over some of the uh, power stuff over here, it's clearly, you know, had the molten wave just go right over this thing. And the idea of these... Uh, uh, so obviously all the components need to be glued uh, down for that to take place. And then these uh, just ensure that you don't get uh, solder dags happening between pads. You just get, as the solder wave goes over this thing, you actually get a larger pad on the end. allows you to capture any excess solder that's coming off like that. You should be able to see there how the solder is all the way up these legs of all these parts. So that's a dead giveaway how you can tell that a molten solder bath has gone over this thing because it's just plated those legs right up there. Whereas if it was reflow soldering, if you just had solder paste on the pads, you'd of course only get the reflow down on the pins down there. And you can see the glue oozing out the bottom of the package there holding the device down. So you just uh, don't see boards like, you know, SMD boards like this, uh, wave soldered like this anymore. It's just all gone uh, almost exclusively uh, reflow, uh, you know, infrared uh, or other uh, reflow soldering because it's much more controlled, much nicer. When you've got a hot molten solder bath just passing over this, all of these components just picture, you know, big blobs of molten solder just going blah right across the board like this and you end up with quite a messy board it's hard to get on camera but you know all the joints are messy and and all the components have to be individually glued down it's just it's a really horrid uh, process i'm glad they've done away with it now the idea with that uh, solder thieving pads like these these larger pads on the outside let's say that the uh, board travels through the soldering wave in this direction okay so the wave is coming across like this and then behind it it's bubbling like this as it goes across and it's dragging the solder across all these pins just like the drag, drag soldering technique you've seen in the videos and when it gets to this side over here when the all the bubbling boiling solder is being dragged across these last two pins if they're the same size pads then you can actually get a, a you know a bridge a, a solder short between those two pins but if this pin over if this pad over here has a solder feath on it it's a solder thieving pad then the solder inherently wants to go towards that larger pad and stay there so as the board travels through like this it ensures that there's no short between those last two pins there so ideally in this case if the solder uh, is flowing in this direction like this or the board is moving in this direction so to speak then you don't actually need the thieving pads on this end if you know the direction your board or your panel is traveling through the wave soldering machine you only need those on one end but just as a matter of course they just put them on both ends just in case you want to whack the board around the other way but ideally if you're doing this properly you should know the direction or you're laying out your board for wave soldering you should know your direction of board travel whether it's this direction or that direction because ideally you want the pads to be in this direction if this chip was oriented like that and you put your board through the wave soldering machine like this that's not a good idea folks and same thing with your uh, surface mount components like this you want them so you want your ICs in this orientation so the solder drags over the pins like that and uh, ideally you also want your um, uh, passive components like this mounted in the vertical direction these ones here won't necessarily solder as well and as consistently as one in this vertical orientation when the board moves through wave soldering like that just because it forms a wet like there's a cavity behind it like that when it travels through the wave soldering as the last bit of solder goes over and it may there's a chance very slight one it may not take as well as it would on a vertical oriented passive component and that's why if you have a look at the board it's no coincidence that all of the chips are pointed in this direction like this none are mounted in the vertical direction that means the board 
passes through the wave soldering process like that. And very often the designer of the board will actually uh, put on the silk screen a big arrow pointing in the direction of board travel but I can't seem to find any solder direction marker there at all. If you actually have a look at some of these chips here you can see that the right hand side pins actually have more solder on them than the left hand side pins there. That means that this board has passed through the wave soldering process like this. So imagine the this is this center marker here is the bubbling boiling wave solder. It's going here and these left hand pins are hitting the solder first and then they're dragging across like that and then you're you end up with via that process I said earlier where it, it you know you need a larger pad on the end of the chip to determine where the solder naturally uh, flows through onto that last pin so you don't get a short then that's why you get a little bit more solder on those pins at that end on the right hand end of the chip there so clearly this board we know exactly which direction it's gone through the wave soldering process. Neat.